Internet Protocol Television is a system through which television services are delivered using the Internet Protocol Suite over a packet-switched network such as a LAN or the Internet, instead of being delivered through traditional terrestrial, satellite signal, and cable television formats. Unlike downloaded media, IPTV offers the ability to stream the media in smaller batches, directly from the source. As a result, a client media player can begin playing the data before the entire file has been transmitted. This is known as streaming media. IPTV services may be classified into three main groups, live television, with or without interactivity related to the current TV show. Time-shifted television, catch-up TV, start-over TV. Video on demand, browse a catalog of videos, not related to TV programming. IPTV is distinguished from Internet television by its ongoing standardization process and preferential deployment scenarios in subscriber-based telecommunications networks with high-speed access channels into end-user premises via set-top boxes or other customer premises equipment. Definition Historically, many different definitions of IPTV have appeared, including elementary streams over IP networks transport streams over IP networks and a number of proprietary systems. One official definition approved by the International Telecommunication Union Focus Group on IPTV is IPTV is defined as multimedia services such as television audio graphics data delivered over IP-based networks managed to provide the required level of quality of service and experience, security, interactivity and reliability. Another more detailed definition of IPTV is the one given by Alliance for Telecommunications Industry Solutions IPTV Exploratory Group on 2005. IPTV is defined as the secure and reliable delivery to subscribers of entertainment video and related services. These services may include, for example, Live TV, Video On Demand and Interactive TV. These services are delivered across an access agnostic, packet switched network that employs the IP protocol to transport the audio, video and control signals. In contrast to video over the public internet, with IPTV deployments, network security and performance are tightly managed to ensure a superior entertainment experience, resulting in a compelling business environment for content providers, advertisers and customers alike. History the term IPTV first appeared in 1995 with the founding of Precept Software by Judith Estrin and Bill Carrico. Precept developed an Internet video product named IPTV. IPTV was a multicast backbone compatible Windows and Unix based application that transmitted single and multi source audio and video traffic, ranging from low to DVD quality, using both Unicast and IP multicast real time transport protocol and real time control protocol. The software was written primarily by Steve Kusner, Carl Aubach, and Carl Chi Kuan. Precept was acquired by Cisco Systems in 1998. Cisco retains the IPTV trademark. Internet radio company AudioNet started the first continuous live webcasts with content from WFAA-TV in January 1998 and KCTULP on January 10, 1998. Kingston Communications a regional telecommunications operator in the UK, launched KIT, an IPTV over digital subscriber line broadband interactive TV service in September 1999 after conducting various TV and video on demand trials. The operator added additional VOD service in October 2001 with Yes TV, a VOD content provider. Kingston was one of the first companies in the world to introduce IPTV and IPVOD over ADSL. In 2006, the KIT service was discontinued, subscribers having declined from a peak of 10,000 to 4,000. In 1999, NBTEL was the first to commercially deploy Internet Protocol Television over DSL in Canada using the Alcatel 7350 DSL AM and middleware created by iMagic TV. The service was marketed under the brand Vibe Vision in New Brunswick, and later expanded into Nova Scotia in early 2000 after the formation of Alient. iMagic TV was later sold to Alcatel. In 2002, SAST was the second in Canada to commercially deploy Internet Protocol video over DSL, 
using the Lucent Stinger DSL platform. In 2006, it was the first North American company to offer high-definition television channels over an IPTV service. In 2003, Total Access Networks Inc. launched an IPTV service, consisting of 100 free IPTV stations worldwide. In 2005, Breed Bands Borlegit launched its IPTV service as the first service provider in Sweden. As of January 2009, they are not the biggest supplier any longer. Telesonora, who launched their service late and now has more customers. In 2006, Verzian FIOS launched its FIOS product, IPTV service in the United States, comprising a national head-end and regional video serving offices. Verizon offered over 300 channels in 11 cities with more to be added in 2007 and beyond. In March 2009, Verizon announced that FIOS had expanded to 100 or more high-definition channels in every FIOS market. Verizon FIOS lineup expands to 100 or more high-definition channels in every FIOS TV market. While using Internet protocols, Verizon built a private IP network exclusively for video transport. In 2007, TPG became the first Internet service provider in Australia to launch IPTV. Complementary to its ADSL2 Plus package this was, and still is, free of charge to customers on eligible plans and now offers over 45 local free-to-air channels and international channels. By 2010, Enet and Telstra launched IPTV services in conjunction to Internet plans but with extra fees. In 2008, PTCL launched IPTV under the brand name of PTCL Smart TV. This service is available in 50 major cities of the country offering 140 live channels and more than 500 titles for VOD with key features such as, time shift television, parental control, EPG, VOD, NVOD. In 2009, the company Zarp TV Ascent came out with the IPTV receiver Zarp TV Ascent HD 1009N, a receiver that could bring live channels from all over the world. Successfully now in 2013 it is still in the market as one of the leading brands in the industry with streaming of over 1,200 live channels. Its wide success is accredited by the strong impact it has in the United States market. In 2010, Century Link Euro after acquiring EMBARQ and Kesta Euro entered five U.S. markets with an IPTV service called Prism. This was after successful test marketing in Florida. In 2011, TOT launched IPTV service over its ADSL service. The offering has four tiers of service from a basic platform of free over-the-air channels in Thai language to a full slate of entertainment packages offering various international satellite networks in Thai, English, French, Korean, Indian and Arabic languages. In 2012, Deet Media TV, 3, launched its IPTV service over the ADSL service offered by Direct Telecom to its customers. Currently they offer UK IPTV service to UK expats all over the world offering UK, Russian and German language FTV FTA channels. The IPTV service can be enjoyed on a TV using a set-top box. Users can also enjoy directly on mobile devices such as the iPad, iPhone and iPod from the browser without the need of installing apps. In 2013, VMEDIA launched its IPTV service over its cable DSL service. Currently they offer IPTV within Ontario, Canada with hopes to be able to expand to all over Canada. In 2013 Hospitality IPTV Limited launched OTT services for 40 live TV streaming channels throughout Australia and New Zealand under a secure OTT delivery platform as an expansion of hugely successful previous IPTV closed network platforms. During the 2014 Winter Olympics shortest path bridging was used to deliver 36 IPTV HD Olympic channels. Promise the technology was hindered by low broadband penetration and by the relatively high cost of installing wiring capable of transporting IPTV content reliably in the customer's home. However, residential IPTV was expected to grow as broadband was available to more than 200 million households worldwide in 2005. In December 2009, 
the FCC began looking into using set-top boxes to make TVs with cable or similar services into network video players. FCC Media Bureau Chief Bill Lake had said earlier that TV and the Internet would soon be the same, but only 75% of homes had computers, while 99% had TV. A 2009 Nielsen survey found 99% of video viewing was done on TV. Markets The number of global IPTV subscribers was expected to grow from 28 million in 2009 to 83 million in 2013. Europe and Asia are the leading territories in terms of the overall number of subscribers. But in terms of service revenues, Europe and North America generate a larger share of global revenue, due to very low average revenue per user in China and India, the fastest growing is Asia. The global IPTV market revenues are forecast to grow from US$12 billion US in 2009 to US$38 billion US in 2013. Services also launched in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Pakistan, Canada, Croatia, Lithuania, Republic of Moldova, Macedonia, Montenegro, Poland, Mongolia, Romania, Serbia, Slovenia, the Netherlands, Georgia, Greece, Denmark, Finland, Estonia, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Lithuania, Turkey, Colombia and Chile. The United Kingdom launched IPTV early and after a slow initial growth, in February 2009 BT announced that it had reached 398,000 subscribers to its BT Vision service. Claro has launched their own IPTV service called Claro TV. This service is available in several countries in which they operate, such as Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. IPTV is just beginning to grow in Central and Eastern Europe and Latin America, and now it is growing in South Asian countries such as Sri Lanka, Pakistan and especially India. But significant plans exist in countries such as Russia. Kazakhstan introduced its own IPTV services by the national provider Kazakh Telecom JSC and content integrator Alacost under the ATV brand in two major cities Astana and Almaty in 2009 and is about to go nationwide starting 2010. Australian ISPA Net launched Australia's first IPTV with FETCHTV. The first IPTV service to launch on the Chinese mainland sells under the BES TV brand and is currently available in the cities of Shanghai and Harbin. In India, IPTV was launched by Airtel and the government service provider MTNL and BSNL through tie-up with AKSH and is available in most of the major cities of the country. Meanwhile, UF Group which is the franchise owner for UFO movies in southern India plans to offer multiple host of services such as customers' movies on demand, shopping online, video conferencing, media player, e-learning on their single IPTV set-top box branded as Imagine. In Sri Lanka, IPTV was launched by Sri Lanka Telecom in 2008, under the brand name of PEO TV. This service is available in whole country. In Pakistan, IPTV was launched by PTCL in 2008, under the brand name of Smart TV. This service is available in most major cities of the country. In Malaysia, various companies have attempted to launch IPTV services since 2005. Failed pay TV provider MeTV attempted to use an IPTV over UHF service but the service failed to take off. Hype TV was supposed to use an IPTV-based system, but not true IPTV as it does not provide a set-top box and requires users to view channels using a computer. True IPTV providers available in the country at the moment are Fine TV and DETV. In Q2 2010, Telecom Malaysia launched IPTV services through their fiber to the home product UniFi in select areas. In April 2010, Astro began testing IPTV services on Time.com but had high-speed fiber to the home optical fiber network. In December 2010, Astro began trials with customers in high-rise condominium buildings around the Mont Chiaran area. In April 2011, Astro commercially launched its IPTV services under the tagline The One and Only Line You'll Ever Need, a triple play offering in conjunction with Time.com Bahad that provides all the Astro programming via IPTV.
together with voice telephone services and broadband internet access all through the same fiber optic connection into the customer's home. In Turkey, TTNET launched IPTV services under the name Itivabu in 2010. It was available in pilot areas in the cities of Istanbul, Adigrizmir and Ankara. As of 2011, IPTV service is launched as a large-scale commercial service and widely available across the country under the trademark Tivabu EV. Super Online plans to provide IPTV under the different name Web TV in 2011. Tower One Quarter AK Telecom started building the fiber optic substructure for IPTV in late 2007. In Iran, Shima is the first IPTV service provider, launched its pilot in 2011. In Saudi Arabia, MAHEC is offering hospitality TV powered by Nevron with complete design, installation and maintenance services. For hospitality, besides targeting the homes, vendors target IPTV services to the hospitality sector. IPTV is a natural progression from the pay-per-view and video-on-demand offerings. Some players such as Locatl, Select TV, VDA, and Tivas have started offering IPTV to the hotels before moving into the homes. In 2013 Locatl Company launched the most comprehensively integrated IPTV platform available into new markets in Australia, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Ethiopia and Sri Lanka. Architecture, Elements, TV Head End, where lived TV channels are encoded, encrypted and delivered in the form of IP multicast streams. VOD platform, where on-demand video assets are stored and served when a user makes a request in the form of IP Unicus stream. Interactive portal, allows the user to navigate within the different IPTV services, such as the VOD catalog. Delivery network, the packet-switched network that carries IP packets. Home gateway, the piece of equipment at the user's home that terminates the access link from the delivery network. Users set top box, the piece of equipment at the user's home that decodes and decrypts TV and VOD content and displays it on the TV screen. Architecture of a video server network, depending on the network architecture of the service provider, there are two main types of video server architecture that can be considered for IPTV deployment, centralized and distributed. The centralized architecture model is a relatively simple and easy to manage solution. For example, as all contents are stored in centralized servers, it does not require a comprehensive content distribution system. Centralized architecture is generally good for a network that provides relatively small VOD service deployment, has adequate core and edge bandwidth and has an efficient content delivery network. Distributed architecture is just as scalable as the centralized model. However it has bandwidth usage advantages and inherent system management features that are essential for managing a larger server network. Operators who plan to deploy a relatively large system should therefore consider implementing a distributed architecture model right from the start. Distributed architecture requires intelligent and sophisticated content distribution technologies to augment effective delivery of multimedia contents over service providers network. Home networks in many cases, the residential gateway that provides connectivity with the Internet access network is not located close to the IPTV set-top box. This scenario becomes very common as service providers start to offer service packages with multiple set-top boxes per subscriber. Networking technologies that take advantage of existing home wiring or of wireless hardware have become common solutions for this problem although fragmentation in the wired home networking market has limited somewhat the growth in this market. In December 2008, ITUT adopted Recommendation GHN, which is a next-generation home networking standard that specifies a common PHY MAC that can operate over any home wiring. During 2012 IEC will adopt a pre-norm for POF networking at gigabit speed. This pre-standard will specify a PHY that operates at an adaptable bit rate between 100 Mbit S and 1 Mbit S depending on the link power budget. Groups such as the Multimedia Over Coax Alliance, Home Plug Powerline Alliance, Home Phone Line Networking Alliance, and Quasar Alliance each advocate their own technologies. IMS Architecture, 
there is a growing standardization effort on the use of the 3 gppip multimedia subsystem as an architecture for supporting IPTV services in carriers' networks. Both ITUT and ETSI are working on so-called IMS-based IPTV standards. Carriers will be able to offer both voice and IPTV services over the same core infrastructure and the implementation of services combining conventional TV services with telephony features will become straightforward. The Multi-Service Forum recently conducted interoperability of IMS-based IPTV solutions during its GMI event in 2008. Protocols IPTV covers both live TV as well as stored video on demand VOD. Playback requires a broadband device connected to either a fixed or wireless IP network in the form of either a standalone personal computer or limited embedded OS device such as a smartphone, touchscreen tablet, game console, connector TV or set-top box. Video compression is provided by either a H.263 or H.264 derived codec audio compressed via a MDCT-based codec and then encapsulated in either an MPEG transport stream or a TP packets or flash video packets for live or VOD streaming. IP multicasting allows for live data to be sent to multiple receivers using a single multicast group address. H264-MPEG for AVC is commonly used for Internet streaming over higher bit rate standards such as H261 and H263 which were more designed for ISDN video conferencing. H2622 is generally not used as the bandwidth required would quite easily saturate a network which is why they are only used in single link broadcast or storage applications. In standards-based IPTV systems, the primary underlying protocols used are, Service Provider Based Streaming, IGMP for subscribing to a live multicast stream and for changing from one live multicast stream to another. IP multicast operates within LANs and across WANs also. IP multicast is usually routed in the network core by protocol independent multicast, setting up correct distribution of multicast streams from their source all the way to the customers who wants to view them duplicating received packets as needed. On-demand content uses a negotiated unicast connection. RTP over UDP or the lower overhead H222 transport stream over TCP are generally the preferred methods of encapsulation. Web-based unicast only live and VOD streaming, Adobe Flash Player prefers RTMP over TCP with setup and control via either AMF or XML or JSON transactions. Apple iOS uses HLS adaptive bit rate streaming over HTTP with setup and control via an embedded M3U playlist file. Microsoft Silverlight uses smooth streaming over HTTP. Web-based multicast live and unicast VOD streaming, IETF recommends RTP over UDP or TCP transports with setup and control using RTSP over TCP. Connector TVs, game consoles, set-top box to network personal video recorders, local network content uses UPnP Avenue for unicast via HTTP over TCP or for multicast live RTP over UDP. Web-based content is provided through either inline web plugins or a television broadcast-based application that uses a middleware language such as MHEG5 that triggers an event such as loading an inline web browser using an Adobe Flash Player plugin. A telecommunications company IPTV service is usually delivered over an investment-heavy wall garden network. Local IPTV, as used by businesses for audiovisual AV distribution on their company networks is typically based on a mixture of conventional TV reception equipment and IPTV encoders, IPTV gateways that take broadcast MPEG channels and IP wrap them to create multicast streams. Via satellite, Although IPTV and conventional satellite TV distribution have been seen as complementary technologies, they are likely to be increasingly used together in hybrid IPTV networks that deliver the highest levels of performance and reliability. IPTV is largely neutral to the transmission medium, and IP traffic is already routinely carried by satellite for Internet backbone trunking and corporate VSAT networks. The use of satellite to carry IP is fundamental to overcoming the greatest shortcoming of IPTV over terrestrial cables a euro the speed bandwidth of the connection. 
the copper twisted pair cabling that forms the last mile of the telephone and broadband network in many countries is not able to provide a sizable proportion of the population with an IPTV service that matches even existing terrestrial or satellite digital TV distribution. For a competitive multi channel TV service, a connection speed of 20 Mbit-s is likely to be required, but unavailable to most potential customers. The increasing popularity of high-definition television increases connection speed requirements, or limits IPTV service quality and connection eligibility even further. However, satellites are capable of delivering in excess of 100 Mbit-s via multi-spot beam technologies making satellite a clear emerging technology for implementing IPTV networks. Satellite distribution can be included in an IPTV network architecture in several ways. The simplest to implement is an IPTV direct-to-home architecture, in which hybrid DVB broadband set-top boxes and subscriber homes integrate satellite and IP reception to give near-infinite bandwidth with return channel capabilities. In such a system, Many live TV channels may be multicast via satellite with stored video on demand transmission via the broadband connection. Archival Euro Unregistered Trademark S Satellite Media Solutions Division suggests a Euro OEIPTV works best in a hybrid format. For example, you would use broadband to receive some content and satellite to receive other, such as live channels a Euro. Hybrid IPTV Hybrid IPTV refers to the combination of traditional broadcast TV services and video delivered over either managed IP networks or the public Internet. It is an increasing trend in both the consumer and pay TV, operator markets. Hybrid IPTV has grown in popularity in recent years as a result of two major drivers. Since the emergence of online video aggregation sites, like YouTube and Vimeo in the mid-2000s, traditional pay TV operators have come under increasing pressure to provide their subscribers with a means of viewing Internet-based video, both professional and user-generated on their televisions. At the same time, specialist IP-based operators, often telecommunications providers have looked for ways to offer analog and digital terrestrial services to their operations, without adding either additional cost or complexity to their transmission operations. Bandwidth is a valuable asset for operators, so many have looked for alternative ways to deliver these new services without investing in additional network infrastructures. A hybrid set-top allows content from a range of sources, including terrestrial broadcast, satellite, and cable, to be brought together with video delivered over the Internet via an Ethernet connection on the device. This enables television viewers to access a greater variety of content on their TV sets without the need for a separate box for each service. Hybrid IPTV set-top boxes also enable users to access a range of advanced interactive services, such as VOD slash catch-up TV, as well as Internet applications, including video telephony, surveillance, gaming, shopping, e-government accessed via a television set. From a pay TV operator a Euro unregistered trademark S perspective, a hybrid IPTV set-top box gives them greater long-term flexibility by enabling them to deploy new services and applications as and when consumers require, most often without the need to upgrade equipment or for an engineer to visit and reconfigure or swap out the device. This minimizes the cost of launching new services, increases speed to market and limits disruption for consumers. The Hybrid Broadcast Broadband TV Consortium of Industry Companies is currently promoting and establishing an open European standard for hybrid set-top boxes for the reception of broadcast and broadband digital TV and multimedia applications with a single user interface. These trends led to the development of hybrid broadcast broadband TV set-top boxes that included both a broadcast tuner and an Internet connection a Euro usually an Ethernet port. The first commercially available hybrid IPTV set-top box was developed by Advanced Digital Broadcast, a developer of digital television hardware and software, in 2005. The platform was developed for Spanish pay TV operator Telefonica, and used as part of its Movistar TV service, launched to subscribers at the end of 2005. An alternative approach is the IPTV version of the Heard End in the Sky Cable TV solution. Here, 
multiple TV channels are distributed via satellite to the ISP or IPTV provider a Euro unregistered trademark as point of presence for IP encapsulated distribution to individual subscribers is required by each subscriber. This can provide a huge selection of channels to subscribers without overburdening internet trunking to the POP, and enables an IPTV service to be offered to small or remote operators outside the reach of terrestrial high-speed broadband connection. An example is a network combining fiber and satellite distribution via an SES New Skies satellite of 95 channels to Latin America and the Caribbean, operated by IPTV Americas. While the future development of IPTV probably lies with a number of coexisting architectures and implementations, it is clear that broadcasting of high bandwidth applications such as IPTV is accomplished more efficiently and cost effectively using satellite, and it is predicted that the majority of global IPTV growth will be fueled by hybrid networks. Advantages The Internet Protocol based platform offers significant advantages including the ability to integrate television with other IP-based services like high-speed Internet access and VoIP. A switched IP network also allows for the delivery of significantly more content and functionality. In a typical TV or satellite network, using broadcast video technology, all the content constantly flows downstream to each customer, and the customer switches the content at the set-top box. The customer can select from as many choices as the telecoms, cable or satellite company can stuff into the A Euro or a pipe a Euro flowing into the home. A switched IP network works differently. Content remains in the network, and only the content the customer selects is sent into the customer a Euro unregistered trademark S home. That frees up bandwidth and the customer a Euro unregistered trademark S choice is less restricted by the size of the A Euro or a pipe a Euro into the home. This also implies that the customer's privacy could be compromised to a greater extent than is possible with traditional TV or satellite networks. It may also provide a means to hack into, or at least disrupt the private network. Economics the cable industry's expenditures of approximately $1 billion per year are based on network updates to accommodate higher data speeds. Most operators use two Euro 3 channels to support maximum data speeds of 50 Mbit S to 100 Mbit S. However, because video streams require a high bit rate for much longer periods of time, the expenditures to support high amounts of video traffic will be much greater. This phenomenon is called persistency. Data persistency is routinely 5% while video persistency can easily reach 50%. As video traffic continues to grow, this means that significantly more CMTS downstream channels will be required to carry this video content. Based on today's market, it is likely that industry expenditures for CMTS expansion could exceed $2 billion a year, virtually all of that expenditure being driven by video traffic. Adoption of IPTV for carrying the majority of this traffic could save the industry approximately 75% of this capital expenditure. Interactivity An IP-based platform also allows significant opportunities to make the TV viewing experience more interactive and personalized. The supplier may, for example, include an interactive program guide that allows viewers to search for content by title or act or a Euro unregistered trademark as name or a picture-in-picture -picture functionality that allows them to a Euro a channel surf a Euro without leaving the program their Euro unregistered trademark re-watching. Viewers may be able to look up a player a Euro unregistered trademark as stats while watching a sports game, or control the camera angle. They also may be able to access photos or music from their PC on their television, use a wireless phone to schedule a recording of their favorite show or even adjust parental controls so their child can watch a documentary for a school report, while their Euro unregistered trademark re away from home. In order that there can take place an interaction between the receiver and the transmitter, a feedback channel is needed. Due to this, terrestrial, satellite, and cable networks for television do not allow interactivity. However, Interactivity with those networks can be possible by combining TV networks with data networks such as the Internet or a mobile communication network. Video on demand, IPTV technology is bringing video on demand to television, 
which permits a customer to browse an online program or film catalog, to watch trailers and to then select a selected recording. The playout of the selected item starts nearly instantaneously on the customer's TV or PC. Technically, when the customer selects the movie, a point-to-point -point Unicast connection is set up between the customer's decoder and the delivering streaming server. The signaling for the trick play functionality is assured by RTSP. The most common codecs used for VODE are MPEG2, MPEG4 and VC1. In an attempt to avoid content piracy, the VODE content is usually encrypted. Whilst encryption of satellite and cable TV broadcasts is in old practice, with IPTV technology it can effectively be thought of as a form of digital rights management. A film that is chosen, for example, may be playable for 24 hours following payment, after which time it becomes unavailable. IPTV-based converged services, another advantage of an IP-based network is the opportunity for integration and convergence. This opportunity is amplified when using IMS-based solutions. Converged services implies interaction of existing services in a seamless manner to create new value-added services. One example is on-screen caller ID, getting caller ID on a TV and the ability to handle it. IP-based services will help to enable efforts to provide consumers anytime anywhere access to content over their televisions, PCs and cell phones, and to integrate services and content to tie them together. Within businesses and institutions, IPTV eliminates the need to run a parallel infrastructure to deliver live and stored video services. Limitations IPTV is sensitive to packet loss and delays if the streamed data is unreliable. IPTV has strict minimum speed requirements in order to facilitate the right number of frames per second to deliver moving pictures. This means that the limited connection speed and bandwidth available for a large IPTV customer base can reduce the service quality delivered. Although a few countries have very high speed broadband enabled populations, such as South Korea with 6 million homes benefiting from a minimum connection speed of 100 Mbps, in other countries legacy networks struggle to provide 3 Euro 5 Mbps and so simultaneous provision to the home of TV channels. VOIP and Internet access may not be viable. The last mile delivery for IPTV usually has a bandwidth restriction that only allows a small number of simultaneous TV channel streams a euro typically from 1 to 3 a euro to be delivered. Streaming IPTV across wireless links within the home has proved troublesome. Not due to bandwidth limitations as many assume but due to issues with multipath and reflections of the RF signal carrying the IP data packets. An IPTV stream is sensitive to packets arriving at the right time and in the right order. Improvements in wireless technology are now starting to provide equipment to solve the problem. Due to the limitations of wireless, most IPTV service providers today use wired home networking technologies instead of wireless technologies like 802.11. Service providers such as AT&T have expressed support for the work done in this direction by ITUT, which has adopted recommendation GHN, which is a next-generation home networking standard that specifies a common PHY MAC that can operate over any home wiring. Latency The latency inherent in the use of satellite internet is often held up as reason why satellites cannot be successfully used for IPTV but in practice latency is not an important factor for IPTV. An IPTV service does not require real-time transmission, as is the case with telephony or video conferencing services. It is the latency of response to requests to change channel, display an EPG, etc. that most affects customers a Euro unregistered trademark perceived quality of service, and these problems affect satellite IPTV no more than terrestrial IPTV. Command latency problems, faced by terrestrial IPTV networks with insufficient bandwidth as their customer base grows, may be solved by the high capacity of satellite distribution. Satellite distribution does suffer from latency a euro the time for the signal to travel up from the hub to the satellite and back down to the user is around 0.25 seconds, and cannot be reduced. However, the effects of this delay are mitigated in real-life systems using data compression, TCP acceleration, 
and HTTP prefetching. Satellite latency can be detrimental to especially time-sensitive applications such as online gaming, but IPTV is typically a simplex operation and latency is not a critical factor for video transmission. Existing video transmission systems of both analog and digital formats already introduce known quantifiable delays. Existing DVB-TV channels that simulcast by both terrestrial and satellite transmissions experience the same 0.25 second delay difference between the two services with no detrimental effect, and it goes unnoticed by viewers. Bandwidth requirements. Digital video is a combination of sequence of digital images, and they are made up of pixels or picture elements. Each pixel has two values, which are luminance and chrominance. Luminance is representing intensity of the pixel. Chrominance represents the color of the pixel. Three bytes would be used to represent the color of a high-quality image for a true color technique. A sequence of images is creating the digital video, in that case, images are called as frames. Movies use 24 frames per second. However, the rate of the frames can change according to territory's electrical system so that there are different kinds of frame rates. For instance, North America is using approximately 30 frames per second where the Europe television frame rate is 25 frames per second. Each digital video has dimensions width and height. When referred to analog television, the dimension for SDTV is 720A, 480 pixels, on the other hand, numerous HDTV requires 1920A, 1080 pixels. Moreover, whilst for SDTV, 2 bytes is enough to create the color depth, HDTV requires 3 bytes to create the color depth. Thereby, with a rate of 30 frames second, the uncompressed data rate for SDTV becomes 30A, 640A, 480A, 16, in other words, 147,456,000 bits per second. Moreover, for HDTV, at the same frame rate, Uncompressed date rate becomes 30A, 1920A, 1080A, 24 or 1,492,992,000 bits per second. With that simple calculation, it is obvious that without using a lossy compression method service provider a Euro unregistered trademark S service delivery to the subscribers is limited. There is no absolute answer for the bandwidth requirement for the IPTV service because the bandwidth requirement is increasing due to the devices inside the household. Thus, currently compressed HDTV content can be delivered at a data rate between 8 and 10 Mbit S, but if the home of the consumer equipped with several HDTV outputs, this rate will be multiplied respectively. The high-speed data transfer will increase the needed bandwidth for the viewer. At least two Mbit S is needed to use web based applications on the computer. Additionally, to that, 64 KBITS is required to use landline telephone for the property. In minimal usage, to receive an IPTV triple play service requires 13 Mbit S to process in a household. Privacy implications Due to limitations in bandwidth, an IPTV channel is delivered to the user one at a time as opposed to the traditional multiplex delivery. Changing a channel requires requesting the head-end server to provide a different broadcast stream, much like VOD. This could enable the service provider to accurately track each and every program watched and the duration of watching for each viewer. Broadcasters and advertisers could then understand their audience and programming better with accurate data and targeted advertising. In conjunction with regulatory differences between IPTV and cable TV, this tracking could pose a threat to privacy according to critics. For IP multicast scenarios, since a particular multicast group needs to be requested before it can be viewed, the same privacy concerns apply. Vendors, a small number of companies supply most current IPTV systems. Some, such as Movistar TV, were formed by telecoms operators themselves. To minimize external costs, a tactic also used by PCCW of Hong Kong. Some major telecoms vendors are also active in this space, notably Alcatel Lucent, Ericsson, NEC, Accenture, Thomson, Huawei, and ZTE, as are some IT houses, led by Microsoft. California-based Utstarsom, Incorporated, 
Tennessee-based Whirly Consulting, Tokyo-based The New Media Group, Malaysian-based Select TV and Oslo Norway-based Snap TV also offer end-to-end -end networking infrastructure for IPTV-based services, and Hong Kong-based BNS Limited provides turnkey open platform IPTV technology solutions. Global sales of IPTV systems exceeded US$2 billion US dollars in 2007. Hospitality IPTV Limited, having established many closed network IPTV systems, expanded in 2013 to OTT delivery platforms for markets in New Zealand, Australia and Asia Pacific region, bringing a European flair and sophistication to the delivery of OTT content. Google Fiber offers an IPTV service in Kansas City, Missouri and Kansas City, Kansas which includes gigabit speed internet and over 290 channels via the fiber optic network being built out in KCK and KCMO. Many of these IPTV solution vendors participated in the biennial Global MSF Interoperability 2008 event which was coordinated by the Multi-Service Forum at five sites worldwide from 20 to October 31, 2008. Test equipment vendors including Netrounds, Codonomicon, MPRIX, Ixia, MuDynamics and Spirit joined solution vendors such as the companies listed above and one of the largest IPTV proving grounds ever deployed. Service bundling, for residential users, IPTV is often provided in conjunction with video on demand and may be bundled with Internet services such as Internet access and voice over Internet protocol telecommunications services. Commercial bundling of IPTV, BO IP and Internet access is sometimes referred to in marketing as triple play service. When these three are offered with cellular service, the combined service may be referred to as quadruple play. Regulation Historically, broadcast television has been regulated differently from telecommunications. As IPTV allows TV and VOD to be transmitted over IP networks, new regulatory issues arise. Professor Eli M. Nome highlights in his report TV or not TV, three screens, one regulation. Some of the key challenges with sector specific regulation that is becoming obsolete due to convergence in this field. See also, comparison of streaming media systems, comparison between OTT and IPTV, comparison of video services, content delivery network, grid casting, internet television, list of music streaming services, list of streaming media systems, P2P TV, protection of broadcasts and broadcasting organizations treaty, software as a service, streaming media, weak cast, web television, references. Securing Converged IP Networks, Tyson McCauley, Outback 2006, External Links, ITU IPTV Focus Group, Ars Technica, An Introduction to IPTV, IPTV over IMS, Internet Connector TVs Finally Arrive, Does Video Delivered Over a Telephone Network Require a Cable Franchise? AEI Brookings Joint Center for Regulatory Studies